What's going on, everyone? Happy Saturday. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy, testing negative for the viruses, and having a great day so far. It is time now for the Saturday edition of the Virus Update for Saturday, July 12th, 2025. If you are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all those viruses that can make us sick. And let's face it, there's a lot of viruses out there, and you need to be informed with what's going on with these viruses. You don't see much coverage of them on the news. That's where I come and play. Want to stay informed? Subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked the video. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. And leave your comments down below. And of course, ways to support the channel, including Patreon, where I may start doing uh, some special content soon, is listed down below. Alrighty, we do have a few news stories to look through today, including a sports report. Don't want to miss that. And then we do have a couple other things to look at, some of our daily stuff, and some new data from CJS, which will probably be the second half of this video. And we will look take a look at emergency department visits diagnosed with COVID as well. There's, uh, you'd be surprised. Some states are really starting to pick up the pace. Florida? Yeah, you'll want to see what Florida's doing. All right, starting off with measles news today. Just a couple of notes here. Wyoming sees its second case of measles. This is their second case that they have had this season. Uh, we've been seeing measles cases increase in many different states. We saw Wyoming have its first case not too long ago, and then on Friday they said they are having their second case. Also, in one of the nearby states in that region, North Dakota, Valley City, North Dakota, is dealing with another measles case. Yes, there is another potential exposure as there is a new measles case there. It looks like uh, this was just released on Thursday that they're dealing with another case of measles in North Dakota. So that is not good. All right, a couple things from X I want you to see. First off, this is from Mike Horger. And take a look at this. Wastewater scan already has the south approaching levels of last winter's COVID wave. Normally, I would save anything wastewater related until Sunday, but it's not a terribly busy news day. So let's take a look at this today. And wow, you can see here the south is really starting to pick up the pace. This is not a good thing to see. It is normal, though, for the summertime in the south. Oftentimes, the southern U.S. has a bigger wave in the summertime than they do in the wintertime because, well, more people are inside in the uh, summertime in the south because of air conditioning, especially Florida. Uh, in the wintertime, it can get cold in the south, but uh, oftentimes more people come outside in the wintertime. All right, taking a look at this from sci-fi. Again, wastewater related. That's okay. We have plenty to look at tomorrow when it comes to wastewater. California wastewater data shows all regions, you know, this is not good, in high or medium category for SARS-CoV-2. Yikes, uh, already they are in medium, high or medium, but I'm saying the words already. Last year, they were at this pace a little bit sooner, but eh, it's just a sign that things are once again on the rise. All right, yesterday we talked about Jeff Lyme's ELO. Well, his final performance now, this would be the end. This is, he's retiring ELO, that's it, no more. Uh, that show's now been canceled as well. He's dealing with some sort of a infection, illness, and his doctors are advising him to not uh, perform right now. They're saying it's simply not possible, nor will they be able to reschedule. So that is it. ELO, Electric Light Orchestra, is done. Yes. Ugh. Sad because, I mean, they had a lot of different hits. Telephone line, living thing. On and on, like, I can't even remember the names of them, but they've had several hits. Good songs, if you ask me. All right, moving on to baseball news now. Joey Loper Fido, I hope I said that correct, uh, who plays for the Toronto Blue Jays, has been removed from the starting lineup. He's dealing with some sort of an illness. They don't say what the illness is, but he is dealing with some sort of illness, and he is currently unable to play. They're actually calling it Illness Symptoms. It never ceases to amaze me. There's always different ways that they say illness, and I think that's the first time I've heard them call it illness symptoms. And when I say call it, we don't know if it's COVID. We don't know what it is. But we do know he's sick enough that he can't play baseball right now, so uh, he's removed from the starting lineup. All right, let's take a look at what is going on in India, and we do need to refresh this. And you know what? While this is being refreshed, let's pause and take that hydration break. Let's do it a little early today. So we don't forget. Maybe we'll even do a second hydration break when we get to the uh, 
numbers that we have to read later on. Water is the drink of choice for today. Active COVID cases in India, 646. I believe that continues to come down. And look at this. Two days in a row now, India has reported zero deaths. In case you did not see it on Thursday, the UK this week reports 936 new cases of COVID. That is down significantly. Deaths, 59. Flight with last week. 737 patients admitted into the hospital. All right. All right. Moving on now to, where are we going? We're going to check on what's happening in Canada. The wastewater viral activity level for COVID is low, flu A is low, flu B is low, and RSV is low at this time. Taking a look at what's going on with air qualities in the U.S., we do have some problems with that that continue. Uh, some problems up in the northern plains, some problems out on the west coast. Yeah, take a look at this. And I said we're going to have to continue to watch this. And, you know, I didn't get that... Um, jet stream map up here but look at this it's starting to spread wisconsin today you're dealing with problems and this is wildfire related i'm concerned it eventually could make its way downstream into the northeast uh, if that happens we are going to have some problems all this is there are some moderate air quality problems in the northeast and the east coast right now but nothing as serious as what is being seen in minnesota uh south dakota north dakota wisconsin even iowa nebraska and kansas too and, of course, portions of Canada. So we're going to have to continue to watch that. California is dealing with some problems today. That is not good. And, uh, yeah, if you have COPD, asthma, or anything that could restrict your breathing, you want to take that seriously. Taking a look at the Weather Channel Breathing Index now. Don't ask me why it shows green up there in portions of the Northern Plains. It does. That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, just some moderate breathing problems today across portions of the Great Lakes onto the southeast, and some problems in the west coast and portions of southern Texas. Now let's take a look at what's going on with Pinellas County, Florida. Hey, not a lot of calls here today, less than we've been seeing lately. That is a good thing. Philadelphia yesterday on Friday had 803 EMS calls. Taking a look at what is going on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania right now, currently there are 13 calls. I'm not seeing respiratory emergency as any of them. That's a nice a change. Taking a look at what is going on in Chester County, Pennsylvania, I am seeing one respiratory difficulty call. Everything else looks to be somewhat okay at this time. Uh, taking a look at what's going on in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and we need to refresh this. Yikes. All right, there we are seeing 12 active calls right now. That is busy for Bucks County. Again, remember, I'm still fairly new to this particular dashboard. It's a newer dashboard. They didn't have one, a CAD dashboard. So I don't know. Do they get as high as Montgomery County and Chester? I would think they do. They have a high population right up there with them. So uh, 12 EMS calls right now, respiratory distress. Uh, seeing a few other things going on. Some of them are accident related. And yikes, looks like there are some accidents there as well. Taking a look at the hospital situation in Pennsylvania. A little bit busier than yesterday. Uh, we do see Wellspan York has emergency department overcrowding and behavior health diversion. And we also see up here in the Lehigh Valley a few problems there. A couple in southeast Pennsylvania. One up near Pottsville, Pennsylvania, that is at Geisinger St. Luke's Hospital. What's the issue there? Emergency department is uh, overcrowding and at or near capacity at this time. Taking a look at what is going on in New Jersey today, and we can see we have a specialty issue at Inspira Medical Center Mannington, and everything else there seems to be fine at this time. New York State updated yesterday with 413 new cases. The hospitalizations were at 205. Again, I would like to see New York State get below 200 hospitalizations. Can it happen? I don't know. Eventually, sooner or later, they will rise at some point. And yes, that's just the first of what I have to show you. You have to see here, uh, 205 hospitalizations. People are still being hospitalized for COVID. You're going to see a lot more about hospitalizations in just a moment or two. Take a look at this. Epidemic status for COVID. It's likely growing or is growing in a number of states. We'll look at some of these states when it comes to wastewater tomorrow. And we'll look at some other states uh, where it's not changing. We'll check that out as well because there's a few states we have not looked at in a while. All right, let's take a look at emergency department visits for people diagnosed with COVID. Yeah, if you're new to my channel, that's still a thing. People still have to go to the emergency department for COVID. And someone's probably saying, oh, why would someone go to the emergency department just for a little stupid little cough? Uh, hi, COVID uh, can still be much more serious than a cough. It can be serious. The people who are immunocompromised, 
high. I had COVID back in late December of last year into the first month of this year. Yeah, I felt like absolute hell for a full and entire month. It, it took me a very long time to get better. So, no, COVID is more than just a cough. I still have lingering symptoms of long COVID from infection one in 2020 before the vaccine and infection two, which was just a little while ago. So, yes, COVID can still be quite serious. And, hey, people still die from COVID as well. All right, taking a look at these emergency department visits diagnosed with COVID. Take a look at this. In the United States, they are starting to trend upward, and there's a good reason for that. There's a lot of states that are starting to trend upward. Alabama's one of them, although at the end it went down a little bit. Alaska was starting to go back up again, maybe down a little bit at the end. Arizona going up and still going up. Uh, Arkansas, mm, slight rise there at the very end. California is slowly starting to go up. Colorado, yeah, that may be starting to go up. Connecticut's starting to go up. Delaware's starting to go up. Uh, District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., you're still okay. Florida continues to rise at this time. Hey, you're not far off from 2% of your emergency department visits being COVID-related. Georgia, that's starting to go up once again. Guam, a lot of up and down movements, but overall it has been upward. Hawaii, you're starting to go up again. Idaho drops slightly. Illinois is starting to go up. Indiana, not rising yet. Iowa, not rising yet. Kansas at the end, you may be starting to go up. Kentucky starting to go up. Louisiana is starting to go up. Maine, yeah. It's leveled off at the end, but just before that, you are starting to go up. Maryland, eh, we'll say you're bouncing off the bottom. It's hard to get a read there, maybe up slightly at the end. I'm not going to sit here and analyze over a tiny day of data. Uh, Massachusetts, you're flat at this time. Michigan, you're still okay. That's going to change soon, probably. Uh, Mississippi is starting to go up at this time. Montana, yeah, you're starting to go up. Nebraska's flat. Nevada is dropping. New Hampshire is definitely starting to rise. Uh, New Jersey, ever so slight increase. New Mexico, slight increase. New York State is not rising yet. North Carolina, still okay. North Dakota, maybe a slight rise at the end, but you're really low at this time. Ohio, uh, starting to go up slightly. Oregon has dropped slightly. Pennsylvania, still okay for now. Rhode Island, bounced off the bottom and bounced back up just a little bit. Not terribly concerning yet. South Carolina, not bad yet. Uh, South Dakota, you're still fine. Tennessee, you went up slightly and then you leveled off. Texas is definitely going up. Utah is going up. Uh, Vermont, still okay. Virginia, maybe starting to go up now. Washington, still okay. After a little bit of a rise, you actually went back down slightly. Uh, West Virginia, still okay. And Wisconsin, starting to go up slightly at this time. All right. Anything else we want to look at here? No. Let's go over to some data now from CJS, and that's going to be where we finish you for today. But mind you, we'll be on this for at least five minutes because there's a lot of numbers here. And uh, this is his numbers uh, from Thursday, first off. And Florida, daily numbers, 977 new cases and eight new deaths were reported on Thursday. New York State on Thursday had 494 new cases. That was the day that New York City was added in. Puerto Rico had 589 new cases reported on Thursday. Alaska, monthly updates from Alaska during the summer months. 695 new positive tests reported over the past five weeks and two deaths reported by the CDC data tracker during that period. Colorado, a weekly number. Test case positivity rate of 4.7%, effectively unchanged from last week's 4.6%, and five deaths reported by the CDC data tracker. Connecticut, weekly number, 437 new cases and one new death reported. Indiana, weekly, two-week update, 529 new cases and nine deaths reported by the CDC data tracker. Minnesota, 290 new cases and eight new deaths. New Jersey, 800 new cases, including cases from last week that weren't counted. Then 119 CDC reported hospitalizations reported by the CDC Friday and five deaths reported by the CDC data tracker. North Carolina, weekly, 256 hospital visits for COVID-like illness. The CDC reported 88 COVID-related hospitalizations in North Carolina and three deaths reported by the CDC data tracker. Now his Friday numbers, and there's uh, quite a few for Friday. Florida, first off, daily number was 951 new cases and five new deaths. And for the week, yeah, Florida did a lot of cases, but mind you, there's these at-home tests. People not testing is a big thing in Florida. Uh, their weekly total was 5,920 
eight cases and 37 deaths reported over the past seven days. However, there's more. Florida had 721 CDC reported hospitalizations. I told you, people are still being hospitalized for COVID. That's a big number. New York, daily number, 450 new cases reported today and 2,396 cases reported over the past seven days to go along with 215 CDC reported hospitalizations. There you go, hospitalizations still a thing there as well. Uh, 12 new deaths. New York appears to have stopped updating the CDC provisional death tallies. Okay. Puerto Rico, 496 new cases reported and 2,955 reported over the past seven days to go along with 164 hospitalizations. So yeah, hospitalizations still a thing there. Puerto Rico hasn't reported deaths on a state level for about three weeks, but the CDC data tracker reported 10 new Puerto Rico COVID deaths in their update today. The rest are weekly tallies. Before we get to that, apologies, we got to do another hydration break. There we go. That feels much better. Sometimes this day and age when I speak a lot, my throat gets clogged up. I don't know. Arizona, 807 new cases reported by the state on Wednesday and five deaths reported by the CDC data tracker. California, 3,245 new positive tests. Hey, that's not as bad as Florida, but it's bad enough. A test case positivity rate over the past seven days of reporting of 6.14%, up from 5.91% last week. 596 CDC reported hospitalizations. Let me zoom that out so you can see it. No, you still can't see it. Whatever. And uh, it looks like they did also report 29 new deaths, including one from 2024. Iowa test case positivity rate for the month of June of 2.5% and two deaths reported by the CDC data tracker. Illinois, a test case positivity rate of 2.6%, up slightly from 2.5% uh, last week and five deaths reported this week. Louisiana, 465 emergency department visits, a test case positivity rate of 4.4%, up from 3.9% last week and two new deaths. Ohio, six new deaths reported this week. Pennsylvania, and it's still a thing here, 123 CDC reported hospitalizations. See, if you don't take COVID seriously, it's as easy as one, two, three. You could get it. No, terrible joke. And uh, four deaths reported by the CDC data tracker. Make no mistake, COVID is a virus that you don't want to joke about. West Virginia, a test case positivity rate of 4.46% and one death reported by the CDC data tracker. Wisconsin, a test case Positivity rate of 3% up from 2.2% last week and one death reported by the CDC data tracker. The CDC reports a national test case positivity rate of 3.1% unchanged from last week. 3,592 nationally reported CDC hospitalizations up from last week and the CDC data tracker added 160 deaths since last week and now shows 1 million. 229,939 total COVID deaths since this all started, up from 1,229,779 it was showing last week at this time. Hey, that's the smallest increase for deaths in a long time, but again, we're watching hospitalizations rise in some states now, which means deaths will not be down for much longer. They will likely, unfortunately, at some point start going up, maybe as we enter the month of August or maybe even the end of this month. Already, folks, that does it for the Saturday edition of the Virus Update. If you like today's update, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. Leave your comments down below. Ways to support the channel, including Patreon and other ways, are listed down below. I will see you all again tomorrow. Until I see you again tomorrow, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Saturday afternoon. Thanks for watching.